Well, good evening, family. Hello, Inside Church. Um, good, to really good to see you. I can't really see you in person, but I know you're there. Somebody's sitting on the other side of the camera. So we trust you had a really awesome day. Um, and, uh, and we're here for our evening fellowship. And so we just want you to relax and enjoy it. And let's just enjoy your time. Yes, and just a reminder to the parents that there are Children's Church resources on the website. You can go yes. www.insightchurch.com and download the resources and let your kids do some Children's Church as well. It's important that you also yes, feed amen. in your family spiritually yes, during amen. this time. And amen. that your children are not getting left behind or left out. Right. Hallelujah. Right. So welcome with us. We're going to have a glory time again. Amen. Um, Amen. I've got to tell you that I'm really looking forward to the day when we can be up front and inside church again. And, and having just, praise and worship <coughs> again. And just having glory. full praise and worship. We've got praise and worship going all day and every day here, but it's not our team, so we do miss our team. Um, yes, but so yes, it's really all praise and worship people. Team, we miss you. Yes, looking forward to to resuming that wonderful time of I worship. I hope you're practicing and getting all the new songs together. Because we're looking forward to Amen. lift Amen. off. <laughs> and um, for those folk that are not part of Inside Church but have tuned in, welcome. We just yes, appreciate sorry. you being with us. And um, let's fellowship around the Get word again ready. tonight. Let's Get your Bibles ready as I... Just commit this time to the Lord, Father God. We want to Amen. thank you once again that this is a day that you've made and <clears throat> we have been able to rejoice in it, Lord. We thank you for your abundant life in our lives. We thank you, Father, for the light and the life mm -hmm. and the energy that flows forth from your word when we sit and meditate on it. And now, Father, we thank you as we partake of your word that you will quicken this word from my spirit. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for revelation knowledge that will flow as and when you deem that to be necessary. Thank you, Father, that you will cause my tongue to speak accurately and precisely. That I will only bring forth the words which you would have me speak. I thank you, Father, that faith rises in each one of our hearts. Mm -hmm. I thank you that this lockdown is a season for preparation for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father, we've had time to redeem so many things in our lives, mm -hmm. and most importantly, your word. So as I break this word of life with the people of God tonight, I thank you, Father, by the Holy Ghost, you will feed each person individually yes. precisely what they need amen. and we thank you for this now in jesus name amen amen, amen. It's preparation for liberation amen that's it mm. yes amen. amen amen that's very good yes preparation for liberation so i would like us to go to a scripture let me give you a title just so you have a title if you are going to take any notes um, and it's just uh, it's a nice simple title, Keeping a Spiritual Perspective. Keeping a Spiritual Perspective. See, in life, there are many opportunities to have a perspective on things. But whatever we do, we're to have a spiritual perspective. So, I would like us to go to James 1, 23 to 25. James 1, 23 to 25. I really enjoy the book of James. It's a short book, but it really has some very, very powerful and practical steps in it. For if anyone, verse 23, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Verse 25 says, 
but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in all that he does. Isn't that amazing? This one will be blessed in all or what he does. Not some, all. So we've just about, as we said this morning, we're just about to enter <clears throat> level four of, uh, there'll be a, quite a high percentage of people going back into their daily routines, although they may be slightly different. And I want to use that as a bit of a backdrop, but I want to come in from a spiritual perspective. So as you meditate on the Word of God, as you go through life, um, it's full of statistics, of people losing their life's dream. I want you to think about that. Because we're going to come out of this period of time and sadly there will be those that will have lost their life's dream. Uh, we're aware of, of, a, of a family that he started his business just six months before this lockdown. That's his life's dream. That's his vision. And so prior to coronavirus, there's a host of different reasons. But the question I want to pose to us tonight, is it scriptural? Does God give a vision and then allow it to be stolen? It's an emphatic no. He doesn't allow that. And so last week we looked at the importance of preparation. And what I want to, and I know we just touched on it very lightly, but I would just like to build to the next level. Because after preparation, there's implementation. And so that's what I want to be looking at tonight with you. Just a short word on keeping a spiritual perspective in implementation of your vision, of your dream. And obviously, I believe this is as a direct result that the Holy Ghost will bring this to us at this time because of what's going to unfold in the next week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, maybe two months, maybe three months, maybe four months. So let's assume for tonight that our preparation was with absolute precision. Because people have told me in times past, excluding my own mistakes, and I guess that's why I can bring up the preparation, because in my own life, where things have, I've thought I've prepared, and then when I get into what I wanted to implement, there have been times that I feel I'm ill-prepared and that why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I think of this or, or whatever it may be? And so I want you to hear this tonight, not from a point of view where you come in and you allow yourself to be condemned. The reason that is not scriptural, the reason the Holy Ghost would bring this to us is that people are going to go back into the environment. They've spent time praying. They've spent time saying, Lord, when I get back, when, when I go back into my environment, I'm going to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And when they get there, will it be as they envisioned it? Or will it be over a matter of weeks or even months Will it be that they'll become deferred in their heart 
and relinquish the authority on that vision, on that dream. And it may not be a vision of business. It may be a career change. It may be a family situation. I'm not, I'm not getting specific, but business and jobs will obviously play an extremely important role in the decisions that we make in the next few months considering our life's vision or even a family vision. Uh, there was talk, for instance, that we're not going to have Christmas. Now, whether that's just talk or whether that's going to happen because of the economic impact on businesses. So already that brings a different perspective on how we may have celebrated Christmas in the past. So these are just thought-provoking things that I want to put out there for you tonight. Not least of all, thinking about them for myself. So the question over the years that I have been in business, that I have done life, that I have been in ministry, sadly, I have seen a vast majority of people not realize their vision. And people in Insight will know that every now and again I make reference to this because it's disturbing to me. And I would like to be able to help them. And some people I have tried to help repeatedly, but they've fallen short of it. And I don't want to really get into those discussions tonight because the primary thing that I want you to get hold of is that you maintain ownership of the tangible assets that flow forth from your life and your life's vision. Yeah. And you don't allow it to be taken. Yeah. And so I may ask some relatively hard questions and I think as time's going on and the intensity of the war between light and darkness intensifies, we need to be asking ourselves these harder questions so that when situations arise that will challenge our spiritual perspective on anything, we're not going to change. You notice that's why we read the scripture. And so I would like to try and bring a practical step or two. So there will be a mirror of legitimate reasons until we take an inventory of those reasons and for that cause the setback and reflect them, each reason that is, against a promise in the Word of God. And that's why I said a little bit earlier, be very careful. This is not about condemnation. Truth sets us free. What am I saying? I'll try and unpack it just a little bit more. I've said it, but maybe I'll say it slightly different. Every reason we give for failure, there is a counter statement of promise from God to ensure that that does not happen. Doesn't matter what subject it is, doesn't matter what the reason, some way there is a cause and an effect. And so what the Word does is it addresses the cause and it nullifies the effect. Can you hear what I'm saying, Louise? How many times, the one that I refer to so often perhaps because of the virus, how many times have people told me, I don't know if the Lord wants to heal me, I don't know these are people that have served the Lord for a long time, or we just tolerate that sickness, that 
pain. We just, we just, we become accustomed to having it. Doesn't mean it's right. Doesn't mean it's right. And that's the context. So, with myself, um, I say this very carefully. I know I'm on the public airways, but I am almost to the point of being ruthless with myself when I reflect in the Word and I see I see traces that can tarnish the end result whatever that might be so I think it's vital that we get accustomed to living in absolute truth. There are circumstances that are adverse and that can delay things. But if we're going to use excuses, we will never birth the reality of God's desire for our hearts. And so take those reasons, whether they one or many, and ask the Holy Ghost to show you a scripture that will counter that reason. And then take that passage of scripture for that reason. Write it down. Do schoolwork on these things. Write it down and begin to build your faith back into that particular sphere. Now there may be multiple areas or there may be one. You know, however many there are, but don't make excuses. You know, when Jesus was going to the cross, he said to the Father, if it be possible, clearly the Father told him it's not. And so he went on with the mission. He never gave an excuse because you and I would not be here. And we've all been guilty at some point in our lives <clears throat> of being guilty of excusing ourselves for certain actions. So this is, this is not about condemnation. This is about bringing forth results in our life because you know success and I'm not talking worldly success but success with God causes a greater hunger to to believe in for more to step out further to get out on that water even further because we celebrate we're to celebrate our successes so remember I said don't allow condemnation because that's not scriptural. That's not what we're talking here. So when you do this, when you take a scripture and you reflect the excuse into that scripture, what will happen, you need to hear this, the purpose of doing this is to allow that promise, that word of God, to breathe life and faith back into your heart. Remember, hope deferred makes the heart sick. So when we do this, that word will give us the capacity to say, that was a mistake I made. And Lord, if there was, I see there's disobedience there, I'm just putting out disobedience. There was an act of disobedience there, I repent from that disobedience. And now we release the word to begin to breathe life, faith into our hearts. And at the same time, that word brings corrective action so we don't repeat <coughs> excuse me we don't repeat that excuse we don't 
repeat that mistake because we've now got it documented. There's the passage of scripture I need to meditate on. Because one of the tactics of the enemy is always to work on your weaknesses. He doesn't try your strengths. He goes for your weaknesses, yeah. obviously, but just to remind us. And so when that corrective action comes and you and I take corrective action in that area because of the word that is now given to us, the flip side of that promise is that it brings restoration. So the life and the faith that comes into our hearts is the restoration that comes. God's word, that we know the Holy Ghost, well, for those that don't, the Holy Ghost is the agent of restoration restoring things as they were originally. So can you see, there's never a place where we can say, we're done. We're done. It's too late. It's too far. There, there's no such thing in the gospel. Yeah. But isn't this wonderful? Because you can walk in restoration as it should have been. And that really is the amazing part about the gospel. So one of the greatest challenges for anyone having suffered a significant setback is the courage, and I stress courage, to reignite the vision. Because I've got to tell you, family, believers, I've got to tell you, some people have tried four, five, six times and failed. But it still doesn't preclude them from this truth. Because perhaps in the past, they may not have known this and could well have just done it, tried to do it out of willpower. Willpower works with the Word, not apart from the Word. Yeah. The Word is what gives us the strength. So you can reignite that vision. That significant setback. The reason you need courage is a simple truth. Because one of the first things the enemy will try is the fear of failure all over again. That's why I say you may have tried once, twice, three, four times, but you may never have done it this way. And even if you had, faith comes from the Word. So instead of however long you did it, treble the time. Keep your heart in mind because God's Word does not return void. Faith must come. But the single biggest enemy, once we've had a significant setback, is that we will chart a course to caution. So that instinctively we can manage potentially the fallout. If we do that, we're in the fear realm. As soon as caution comes, and I'm not talking about being irresponsible, but as soon as caution comes and we try to temper down the word, we're no longer in faith. So please just think about that. So certain businesses are to reopen, staff are to resume work. In the next few weeks, and that's why I believe the Holy Ghost will bring these messages to us. In the next few weeks, we'll highlight where businesses stand. And it will only be a percentage of the businesses, because not all businesses will be open. 
we don't know how long the final stages are going to take. We continue to declare this virus down in Jesus' name and for those other levels to become effective or operational in our lives until we get to one as quickly as possible in the name of Jesus. But if it's spread out, I'm just saying over a few weeks, we would see the first batch. Just when we get over that, we'll see the next batch. We'll hear about the next batch and the next batch. That's why I believe the Holy Ghost wants us to fortify our hearts, yeah. looking at things and keeping a spiritual perspective on the season we're about to go into. So perhaps your business, your job is amongst that level four. Please remember these things. Now the first prize that we as believers could, could have and do is that, um, is that we maintain ownership. Because what I'm trying to show you is the devil cannot steal from you. You say, well, he has stolen from me. I'm saying to you, the devil cannot, is not allowed to. We have allowed him access. And don't get into condemnation. Many years ago, and, and some people would remember this testimony, the Lord said to me, I was about to employ somebody in the business. Um, I wasn't in ministry. I was in leadership, but not, I wasn't running a church in those days. And um, this particular person uh, applied for the job and, and just seemed to be everything, everything just stacked up in the natural. But in my heart, I had a pinhead of doubt, a pinhead tiny down. Yeah. And my wife and I discussed it and my words, as people know, and um, so you know, you've got to learn. I said to me, there is no reason. Now this is over nearly 30 years ago. There's no reason why we shouldn't employ this lady. So I employed her. I said, I'm going to have to prove God out because I feel like I'm being too spiritual here. We've been through so many stops as well. Yeah, we had so many people that let us down. And so, um, so she had all the qualifications, everything. And so the net result was that she failed dismally. And she failed not so much in her work ethic, but on a moral issue. And that was within weeks of joining the company. Now we had all the difficulty of unraveling what we had created. We had allowed that into our business. But you didn't know, I had a check. Even though it didn't make sense, God didn't say a check will make sense. I'm not talking about a money check. I'm talking about checking your spirit. Your spirit is the candle of the Lord. And the Lord leads us by our spirit. Can you see, family? So it's so very, very important. So I, I should have kept the thief out of my business. But I actually allowed him in. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And he started to temper with my life's vision and every aspect it of it. Our heart it, it became our heartache at the end of the day. And it filtered back into the church because she was in the church as well. So can you see? So that's the context that I'm talking. Keeping a spiritual perspective. If I had kept a spiritual perspective, and I can say I was young in the Lord, I can say all that. I can't excuse it. I had a check. Albeit small, I had a check. I even raised it with my wife. I remember and we, us saying, yeah. this will be the last time we're going to try it ourselves. Yeah. So, so I'm just saying, you know. Now God restored us. But we went through quite a lot. It taught us a lot. But we could have learned another way. We didn't have to go that way. We could have just gone by the word, bringing correction. Because what the moral, the moral stuff that was 
was happening, would have been exposed anyway, and it would not have been in our business. Joseph taught us that God doesn't have to give us the reason, the reason. why he's saying Correct. don't do it or don't go Correct. or don't, whatever it is. He doesn't have to give the reason. That's exactly right. Exactly right. He can just he just says no or yes. Now, if he didn't give a reason, that's fine. But don't be pushing on God for a reason because it's done by faith. So according to the Word of God in John 10.10, 10, there are two forces at work in the earth. Now there is a third force, but those two overcome the third. The, th the third one is man, man's involvement in the earth. But it's the Lord Jesus Christ and the devil. And those two forces are constantly at conflict. Light and darkness. Light overcoming darkness. But the devil doesn't quit. His time is running out, but he doesn't quit. He'll keep coming, he'll keep coming, he'll keep coming. But remember, remember what Jesus said. I am come that you may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Just a little thought for you as we, as we come to a close here. This verse of John 10.10 10, confirms, if you've never thought of this, that every attack of the devil, and what are the attacks of the devil? There's three core areas. Stealing, killing, and destroying. Okay? Now watch what the Lord does. He counters that. I think it's beautiful. Jesus has a counter-offensive of greater proportion of blessing than the attack that the enemy can, can bring. Watch what he does. He brings in abundance to the full till it overflows. So when the enemy seeks to destroy, God causes. Jesus says, I'll cause overflow blessing. I will call. It doesn't mean the, the, the circumstances don't try and come. It doesn't mean the symptoms don't come. But don't capitulate. Yeah. Don't relinquish your authority. Keep your spiritual perspective in that storm. Mm -hmm. And allow the Lord Jesus Christ, the living word, to come in abundance yeah. to the full till it overflows. And it may be a health issue. It may not be a material issue. It, it it, it may be a children issue. Mm -hmm. Just remember that he is able to bring a counteroffensive of greater proportion than what in blessings than what the devil can bring in his attack. So I close with this last statement. God counters famine. The other week I said, write increase for this week on your fridge. Yeah. Well, write this, this week, particularly if you're going to work. And when you walk in, if you walk, if you work in an unsaved environment, you're going to walk potentially into famine. Statements of famine. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you're going to hear. Yeah. That's what we hear all the time. God counters famine and he has a penalty for the enemy let me remind you this the enemy comes to you and he does touches you in any way there is if he steals from you in any way if you ha are not aware of the scripture of Proverbs 6 verse 30 to 31 I want you to write it big and stick it on your fridge Proverbs 6 verse 30 to 31 I can quote it but let's read it this is the penalty God has imposed on the devil in this season that we're living in People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is starving. Verse 31. Yet when he is found, he must restore sevenfold. Yes. That's a promise. 
Now you need to engage your faith in that and not become tired or wearied. Yes. Stay at the cold face. Yes. It's a promise. It's a promise. It's a promise for you. That's the penalty of the enemy. Yes. When he comes to steal, the minimum he should repay is sevenfold. And I'm asking you, don't say it for a month. Yeah. Remind. Remind him continuously. Yeah. Remind him continuously. Yeah. Remind him continuously. And Malachi 3 says that God rebukes the devourer. Right. So we've, we've put the devil on notice, notice. for stealing, Come on. but it's, it's God's responsibility to perform his, his word. word and see to it that the devil repays. But, and that's part of why we break bread and, yes. and partake of the um, communion is to put God in remembrance of his word. Yes. He says he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. We have scripture that the enemy has to repay hey. sevenfold. We have all sat at home for a month. He has stolen, stolen time correct. from every one of us. He has stolen income from correct. every one of us. It doesn't matter what industry you're in, you cannot make up for the time we have lost. Yeah. Only God can do that supernaturally. And he'll do it through the seven pole. Exactly. So exactly. In the natural, we cannot make natural. up that time. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter what we what you do, it's gone. It's time that is lost to us. And That's one of the very things, good. one of the things that we've always said and we heard it many years ago is time tries trust. Yes. Your responsibility is to execute faith. So you get the word, you execute faith, and then having done all to stand, stand. Yeah. When things open, whether they stay closed for you, having done all, all to, to stand, stand, you have to stand, and then manifestation comes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So when Seven it comes bold. to steal, Hallelujah. we need to know how to maintain ownership. Yes. Remember? Remember, a thief, if he's caught, he can't steal. That's right. So catch him before he steals. Don't stand and watch him stealing and say, I don't know what to do. I've just told yes. you what to do. We still have the enemy on notice for Absolutely. all the plants that he's stealing Absolutely. from us. And we and just, remind, we just yeah. remind the devil that he's yeah. got to pass back. We put God on notice constantly of what his word has said. The enemy has to repay. So if he's stolen a plant from you, he's got to repay with seven. Seven. Seven times the revenue. Yes. That's just the way it works. Now, if you work that out in your mind, you could get quite tired thinking about all this. It's not your job to think. Yeah. Your jo job is to believe and speak. God's job is to make it happen. Yes. So it's as simple as that. That's how we rest in faith in the Word. Amen, Amen family. So Amen. we love and appreciate you. Yes. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful week. If you are going back to work this week, well, praise the Lord. Enjoy it. And um, we'll see you next Sunday if we don't speak to you before via the camera. Yes. Have a blessed Amen. overcoming. Amen. We can enjoy being with your family, redeem the time, spend time in the Word, and having done all to stand, stand. Glory to God. God bless you. We love you in love sight. You.